Hi, in this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to solve an unsteady advection diffusion mass transport problem. So let's consider this unsteady advection diffusion equation and we prescribe Dirichlet or Newman boundary condition. And we also have an uh, initial condition and we wanna solve this using Phoenix. So first we need to derive your weak form. So this is the weak form for this standard advection diffusion equation. You multiply both sides by test function W you only integrate by parts on the diffusion term. So that gives you this term here. And you also have the new boundary condition naturally popping up in the weak form. So uh, in, in this paper, one of our prior papers, we discussed in detail about challenges of solving mass transport problems in uh, thin boundary layers, which is uh, of interest to many types of biotransport problems, inc including cardiovascular mass transport. In future tutorials, I will also talk about some of these uh, more details and provide also codes for those more complex uh, 3D uh, patient-specific mass transport problems. But in this specific pro uh, demonstration, we only wanna solve a simple 2D uh, mass transport problem to see how we can implement this in Phoenix. So this is the code. Uh, so for the example I'm considering today, I'm going to be considering the uh, double gyre flow. So this is a, a benchmark problem in chaotic advection and dynamical systems. So uh, it was first introduced by my PhD advisor, Sean Shadden in his PhD thesis. So essentially we have a two counter rotating vortices, which you can see here. And this small perturbation, the small unsteadiness added to these two vortices creates chaotic flow patterns. And the nice thing about this problem is that you can write it analytically like this. So there's this analytical form for defining velocity. So we have velocity as input in our advection diffusion equation. Normally that comes from numerical solution of navier stokes but in this problem, we have this in this benchmark problem as an analytical solution. So in this, you can read this tutorial and you can see that this flow gives rise to these so-called Lagrangian coherence structures, which are these red lines that you see here that tend to attract and repel these, uh, struct, uh, these concentrations towards them. So, so we are, are going to solve this problem, this 2D unsteady uh, double gyre mass transport problem to see if we can see these Lagrangian coherence structures patterns kind of like dominating the mass transport features that we see. Okay, so this was actually a midterm project that I used to assign in my advanced CFD and FEM class. Okay, so here's the code. Um, uh, we start by defining our geometries, the rectangular domain, define our mesh, and define my function space. In this case, first order function space, and I only have um, scalar function space V. I define another function space, vector function space, which I need to define my velocity vector. Then I define some parameters that appear in this equation for velocity, and I want to solve it for 20 seconds. I'm doing 2,000 time steps. And then I define my initial condition. So the initial condition I'm using is that I'm dividing my rectangle into two parts. For x less, less than one, I'm defining initial condition to be c equals one and the right side of the domain to be zero. So that way I can see if I initialize my uh, mass uh, with one and zero, how the, the concentration mixes as a result of this uh, you know, perturb uh, perturbation. Then I can, uh, I can um, uh, uh, you know, interpolate this Con, uh, or project this uh, concentration into function space V, so that allows me to save it in on file. And then I define some expressions for these uh, these parameters that you see in this tutorial here. So these are my expressions, uh, and each are a function of time because things are changing in time here. And then I go on and define my U and V velocity based on these uh, parameters that I define using an expression. So this is essentially an um, uh, analytical expression for velocity. Okay, then I can define my diffusion coefficient. So the smaller you make your diffusion coefficient, the larger your vector number is, the more challenging it becomes to solve that action diffusion equation. So in practice, for example, in cardiovascular mass transport or any biotransport problem inside uh, liquids, any chemical inside, any biochemical inside blood, for example, the diffusion coefficients tend to be very small. So even for smaller velocity regimes, we get very high pecker numbers. In this case, I'm using a, a still a small diffusion coefficient to give me 
advection dominated transport problem, but later I'll talk about how we deal with the case where the diffusion coefficient is very small, which requires stabilization and some other techniques. So I am not using any stabilized fine element method here. Okay, so here I write down the weak form for the unsteady advection diffusion equation. So essentially I'm taking the weak form that you see here, and I'm discretizing partial C partial T using a simple forward Euler method. So that gives me this part as unknown. So everything that uh, you know, contains the unknown U in this case goes to the left hand side, goes to A and the left hand and the right hand side L contains the known information. In this case, the, the concentration from the previous time step U underscore N. Okay. Then I, need, then I can define a time, file time series to save my results. I can save both the velocity, which is defined analytically, so I can visualize it in parity and also save the solution. In this case, I'm saving the results in VTK format. So that's one file for every uh, time step, but you can also use H5 files or XDMF files like we did in previous tutorials, which is probably more efficient way, which you have a single file that contains all your time series. Okay, so here's my main time loop. I loop over all the time steps, I update time, I update all these expressions that lead to my U and V velocities, and then I solve my weak form to, to find save the solution. So by default, when you call solve like this, it uses the LU decomposition, which is a direct solver, pretty efficient, accurate, only good for usually for 2D or small 3D problems because it's very uh, memory intensive. Okay, so we solve it, and then, you know, depending on how frequently you want, you can save your solutions, at both the velocity and also your concentrations, okay? And then you update your previous time step so you can march forward in time. So now I'm going to show you some results. So this is uh, the uh, results that I get uh, after running this uh, code. Uh, here I'm looking at the velocity, so I can play it. So you can see you have the two... Uh, vortices, the double gyre flow, and as you play it, you can see that these uh, vortices are being perturbed. So here I'm doing quite a bit of perturbation in the velocities, and I can also show the uh, the concentration. So you can see initially on the left, we have one high concentration, on the right, we have zero low concentration. And if I apply this concentration, you can see that the concentration mixes, and we can, if you also look at the Lagrangian coefficient structures, you can kind of see that you can see in the tutorial I just showed, and I'll provide a link to the tutorial, you can kind of see that these concentration patterns that are appearing are being dictated by those uh, Lagrangian coherent structures. So if you make the pectal number even higher, so for example, reduce the diffusion coefficient, what's gonna happen is that your advection is gonna even dominate more, and therefore the LCS, the Lagrangian coherent structure, will even dominate more this transport. So you'll get, a more a sharper concentration patterns here that are localizing near the attracting Lagrangian coherent structure. But anyways, here we can see pretty nicely that we can solve an unsteady mass transport problem um, and uh, give it a specific velocity profile. So in later tutorials, I will show you how to do more complex 3D mass transports and when the velocity profile is given to us from a, a Navier-Stokes solver. Uh, an analytical solution. And also another option that you have is that you can combine this code here with the Navier-Stokes solver code that I talked about earlier. So you can provide, develop a coupled and multi-physics simulation where you solve for velocity and advection diffusion equation at the same time. And the velocity gets fed into your advection diffusion equation as input, and then you solve for your concentration. 